So one of the things I think we have in Australia of this great fear, and we've had it for a very, very long time, is this deep fear of the bush and this deep fear of its natural spaces. And I'm not an expert in this area, but I have read a little bit about Australia's environmental history and its landscape history, um, and also about European colonisation and the way that the landscape um, artists would often paint the landscapes of their memory or landscapes of what they anticipated uh, their superiors would want rather than what was there. Um, and from my understanding, the Heidelberg School, part of the important things that they contributed was an understanding of Australian light, which is very different from the Northern Hemisphere. So coming from that history um, and just its concept of cross the landscape, here are these people in this foreign land where due to drought and flood and how easily people could die, not truly understanding um, what it was and what it offered, I think has cemented a deep psychological fear about our natural spaces. I know sometimes when um, people come from the city and we've gone out um, to uh, even more inland areas, they almost get claustrophobic, ironically, from the vastness of the landscape. Um, I have international students who come out um, and when we travel to inland areas often get a bit nervous because they'll only see one house and then not another for many kilometres and that confuses them because of the village style living for where they are. Um, and so it's this great sense of uncertainty and discomfort about our natural areas and this bushland um, and the potential for raging waters. Um, and so it's really interesting because when you also look at the other part of the Australian imaginary, we have the man from Snowy River. It's still a, those old sort of uh, stories of being able to conquer the land, where it's a fight against the land to take control. And it's really affected us because within that, I don't think we've taken proper stewardship or care for our land. What I'm really, really excited about right now um, is the fact that climate, um, climate scientists and others are starting to realize that Aboriginal Dreamtime stories and other stories are actually a science as well. And so what's happened is that there's been many stories, um, you know, over the generation of Aboriginal people talking about events, but they're starting to realize that that event actually matches something in the, the, the history of, of the climate and um, what they found out through the geology of things. We've also found out that how people navigate um, and our roads, a lot of it is based on um, song lines, Aboriginal song lines, and how uh, if you put over um, the road system, over those song lines, there's a, a lot of overlap. So I think one of the exciting things is that if we start to look to other knowledges, and beyond our traditional, I guess, colonial types of knowledge, and we start to talk about decolonizing knowledge, we open up ourselves to new ways of knowing. 